first book by the Hogarth Press was the 32-page pamphlet entitled Two Stories, Containing the Mark on the Wall by Virginia and Three Jews by Leonard. The catalogue of authors they went on to publish now reads like a roll call of some of the greatest writers in art and artists of the 20th century. Catherine Mansfield, T.S. Eliot, Clive Bell, Cecil Day-Lewis, Robert Graves, E.M. Forster, Christopher Isherwood, John Maynard Keynes, who was the economist, William Plomer, Vita Sackville West, Roger Fry, Gertrude Stein, H.G. Wells, Vanessa Bell, Dora Carrington and Duncan Grant. The Hogarth Pre Press also published the first English translation of Sigmund Freud and other psychoanalytical works. There's a bit of a sexual deviant for Sigmund Freud. Virginia was involved with the business until 1938, after which Leonard ran it with John Lehman until it was taken over by the publishers Chatto and Windus after World War II. So, not just an extraordinary writer, but very important publisher with, uh, with her family and her husband, that, um, of great writers of the 20th century. So, really... Um, a great woman leader in terms of her writing, but also publishing of literature and other people's literature. Margaret Burke White was a great photographer. Margaret Burke White was the first Western photographer allowed into the Soviet Union, the first female photojournalist for Life magazine, the first female war correspondent, and the first photographer to be allowed to work in combat zones during World War II. She once said, quote, Nothing attracts me like a closed door. I love that. And, quote, work is something you can count on, a trusted lifelong friend who never deserts you. 1904 to 1971. That was the year I was born, 1971. Okay, I'm going to finish with um, one of my favourite women leaders in history, Mother Teresa. She's a real legend. Mother Teresa of Calcutta spent her life among the destitute and dying. She founded the Missionaries of Charity who worked with the poorest people of the world. She was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1979 and was beautified by Pope John Paul II after her death. And she's quoted for saying, Love begins at home. And it is not how much we do, but how much we love, how much love we put into the action that we do. Fantastic. 27th of August 1910 to the 5th of September 1997. She was born in Skopje, Skopje Yugoslavia, which is, um, she's an Albanian, from an Albanian family though. And she died in Calcutta, India. She was Albanian. Born 27th August 1910 into an Albanian family, Agnes Gonska Bajasko, Bajasko, I get this name wrong, her birth name was Agnes Gons Gonska Bajasko, was the uh, B O J A X H I U, sorry to say that, was the youngest of five children. Only three of whom survived. Little is known about her early life, although she is recalled that her religious interests were already beginning to form while she was at primary school. By the age of 12, she had developed a particular interest in overseas missions and felt that her vocation was helping the poor. Her inspiration to work in India came from reports sent home by Jesuit. Jesuit missionaries. When 18, she left home to join the Sisters of Loreto, a community of nuns based in Dublin, Ireland, known for their missionary work in India. In Ireland, she was plunged into a different culture. Unable to speak English, she was remembered as being very small, quiet and shy, and even described as ordinary. Fact file. For someone to be beautified, there needs to be documentary evidence of a miracle. In 2012, an Indian woman claimed that her cancer had been cured when she placed a locket containing the image of Mother Teresa on her stomach. This was recognised as a miracle by the Vatican. Evidence of a further miracle will be required before Mother Teresa can be canonised, become a saint. Well, I think that's already happened. Mother Teresa used to be a geography teacher. 
She was criticised for the practice of baptising the dying without regard to their own religion. And Christians, true Christians are always persecuted in this world. The year 1929 brought another change in her life when she was sent to Darjeeling in India, Darjeeling in India, to join the congregation of Sisters of Loretto there. It was here that she made her first vows and chose the name Sister Mary Teresa in honour of the saints Teresa of Avila and Teresa Teresa of Lasso or Lassie. From 1937 she was always known as Mother Teresa. Her service began with a posting to St Mary's High School for Girls in a district of Calcutta where she taught for almost 15 years. In the t on the 10th of September 1946 during a train journey to Darjeeling, she received what she took to be a call from God. She felt urged to leave her teaching post and devote herself to working with the poorest and neediest in India. In her own words, she heard the call to give up all and follow Christ into the slums to serve him among the poorest of the poor. How extraordinary is that? How hard is it to do that? Leaving the safety and shelter Sheltered life at the convent, however, was not a straightforward process. There, there were a number of obstacles to overcome. There always is with great leaders. The church was initially resistant to her forming a new community and she had to seek the intercession of the Archbishop of Calcutta. In 1948, the Vatican granted her permission to leave the Sisters of Loretto and to start her new work under the Archbishop's guidance. Exchanging her habit for the simple sari and sandals of an ordinary Indian woman, Mother Teresa left the safe confines of the convent and school for the open, dirty streets of the larger world. Photographs of Mother Teresa nearly always show her in her plain white sari with a blue border, a simple cross at the shoulder. After undergoing medical training, she formed a group, the Missionaries of Charity, whose, numbers, whose members took the usual vows of poverty, chastity and obedience, and also a fourth vow to give free help to the poorest people. Their mission, in, in Mother Teresa's words, was to care for the hungry, the naked, the homeless, the crippled, the blind, the lepers, all those who feel unwanted, unloved, uncared for throughout society. People who have become a burden to the society and are shunned by everyone. She began by teaching the children of the slums how to read and write and the principles of basic hygiene, but gradually extended this to visiting the sick and the old as well. Just extraordinary work. The missionaries of charity began their distinctive work of ministering to the dying in 1952 when they took over a Hindu temple to the god Kali in Calcutta. The temple became Caliate home for the dying, a refuge where the poorest people could go to ease their departure. The main goal was to give di dignity and love to the old and terminally ill, regarding every individual as uniquely precious in God's sight. Mother Teresa's aims were straightforward, to help the disadvantaged and reduce their suffering. She would, and she believed fervently that by serving the poor in this way she was directly serving Christ. In her speech on receiving the Nobel Prize, she said, He died on the cross for you and for me, and for that leper and for that man dying of hunger, and that naked person lying in the street, not only of Calcutta, but of Africa and New York and London and Oslo, and insisted that we love one another as he loves us, as he loves each one of us. In 1957, the missionaries began to work with lepers and slowly extended their educational work. They also opened a home for orphans and abandoned children. In 1959, they expanded further, spreading their work to other Indian cities. Their focus remained on the poorest of the poor orphans, the dying and those ostracised from society by disease. They soon had centres for more than 22 Indian cities and Mother Teresa travelled to Australia Africa and South America to begin foundations. Poverty in these countries owed much to population and growth, but the missionaries of charity were firmly opposed to contraception and abortion. 
which Mother Teresa described as the worst evil and the greatest enemy of peace. Oh, I don't know about that. What about war? And the violence throughout the world. It's pretty horrific now. The world is becoming very evil. And the book of Revelation says that will happen. You know, in the Bible, the book of Revelation says that the world is becoming more and more evil. The missionaries of charity and affiliated lay groups widened their activities throughout the 1970s. And Mother Teresa received international recognition and financial support. By 1979, when she accepted the Nobel Prize for Peace, she and her affiliated groups had more than 200 different operations in over 25 countries around the world. Absolutely extraordinary. Later, she sent her missionaries of charity into Russia, China, and Cuba. The hallmark of all of Mother Teresa's works, from shelters for those dying of AIDS, to orphanages and homes for the mentally ill, is service to the very poor and needy. Tiny but energetic, in old age, her wrinkled face and glowing eyes familiar throughout the media, Mother Teresa maintained an aura of sanctity, little changed by the worldwide attention she received. She was the recipient of some of the world's highest honours, including the Albert Schweitzer International Prize, the US Presidential Medal of Freedom, and the Congressional Gold Medal. She declined the usual celebrity dinner when she accepted the Nobel Prize and requested that the money saved should go to funds for the poor in Calcutta. She came to be known as the Saint of the Gutters and the Angel of Mercy. Her practical nature was combined with a complete lack of cynicism and an absolute belief in the love of God for his poorest creatures. She was not without her distractors, detractors, sorry. She was not without her detractors, however. Her wisdom in accepting aid from certain politicians and individuals was frequently questioned. As was the Vatican's refusal to disclose the amount of money belonging to the missionaries of charity. Well, obviously, obviously someone like that receiving money, you know it's going to be used for, for the right reason, don't you? Because who else has done something like this, you know, except for Jesus. When you look at all the great Christians in history, Mother Teresa would have to be just pretty much at the top of the list, I reckon. At the time of her death, Mother Teresa was still working with the missionaries of charity and died of a heart attack on the 5th of September 1997 at the age of 87. The Indian government gave her a state funeral and her body was buried in the mother house of the missionaries of charity. Incidentally, if Mother Teresa was alive today, she would be horrified at the violence perpetuated against women in India, men raping and murdering women. Um, the reports have come through in the last three months and more, and the women protesting in, in India not just India, but other places around the world. And she would be horrified to see that happening. Long before her death, books and articles had started to revere her. And in October 2003, she was beautified by Pope John Paul II. Her own words best sum up her life and its guiding principles. Quote, By blood, I am Albanian. By citizenship, an Indian. By faith, I am a Catholic nun. As to my calling, I belong to the world. As to my heart, I belong entirely to the heart of Jesus. Thank you very much.